Hi friends and welcome back to Garfin's Creation. Christmas round the corner. Why not make some kal kals too? This Christmas sweet is everyone's favorite and it's going to be yours too. It's just sweet and very crispy from inside too. Like my other Christmas sweets, this recipe too is very simple, easy and fun to make. And you'll find the recipe in the description box below. To make this eggless kalkal recipe, I have taken some powdered sugar which is ground at home, maida, rava, pinch of salt, little baking powder and ghee. To 3 and half cups of maida, I'll be adding half cup plus 1 tablespoon of rava, quarter teaspoon salt and mix these well. Well, this recipe too is shared to me by my sister. Since then, it's become a family favorite. To make the kalkals a little crispy, be using quarter teaspoon of baking powder. We'll be adding this too into the mix. I had taken half a cup minus two teaspoons of grain sugar, put it into a mixer, made it into a powder, and then now add it to the maida mix. Mix this as well. After mixing this well, I'll be adding 2 tablespoons of ghee or clarified butter. We will be adding the ghee now and mixing it with the maida. This will make the kalkals crispy. We'll be just mixing the ghee and the maida mix so that it's well combined. Just trying to rub the ghee with all the other ingredients. Once this is done, we'll be kneading it with half milk and half water solution. I have taken 3 4 cup water and 3 4 cup milk and mixed it. Add it slowly and knead it to a medium soft dough. Depending on the maida, you may need more or less water and milk solution. Make the dough not too soft, not too hard, just medium soft. The ingredients are mentioned in grams and in cups as well. You may find some ingredients have in tablespoons as well as in cups. So now almost 3 to 4 minutes and the dough has been kneaded well. We will cover the dough with a cloth and let it rest for half an hour. So now after half an hour we will color the dough into different colors. You may see after keeping it for half an hour the dough gets a little more softer. We will just knead it for a minute before we start coloring it. If you wish you may keep it all white as well. To make it a little more colorful and exciting I'll be adding color to it. So we'll be dividing it into four portions. Adding color to maida is a little troublesome so if you wish you can keep it all white as well. This one portion I'll be keeping as white. While making the kalkal always keep the dough covered with a napkin that the dough does not get dried. To one portion of the dough I'll be adding yellow food color. Though I'm using gel food color you can use powder or liquid food color as well. I'll just knead it and just stretch it and color it. Making the kalkals a little bit more colorful adds more color to your Christmas sweets platter. So do try adding little color to the kalkal dough. I have shared some recipes how to make cakes and other Christmas sweets as well on my channel. So do check out those recipes as well. So I have finished kneading all the colors. Let's make the kalkals now. To make the kalkals, be using this kalkal mold. These are available in bakery accessory shops. If you cannot find them, you can use a new comb or a fork too. Take a small portion of the dough and press it on the mold. Make it a little longer and press it well. Before these molds came into the market, new combs were used to make these kalkals. Now once you have pressed it, just start curling it from one side towards the other end. Once you have rolled it out, we'll seal the edges so that it do not open when they are being fried. I'll once more roll it on the comb so that the edges seals well. So our kalkal is ready. If you do not have this mold, you can use a fork too. In the same way, take a small portion of the dough 
and press it on the back side of the fork. New combs or forks were always used previously to make these kalkals. If you cannot get the mold, you can use a fork as well. In the same way, roll it outwards towards the edge of the fork and seal the edges. This is how the fork made kalkal looks like. Now let me show you one more type of kalkal. Just take a small portion of the dough and press it on the kalkal mold again in the same way as we had done previously. In the previous kalkal we had rolled it straight from one edge to the other but this one I'll be rolling it into a slant so it gives a little more curly effect. To seal the edge you can just roll it back and the edge gets sealed. This way you get a little slanted lines and they look very nice as well. Now let's make some shells as well. You can call them shells or flowers. Just need a little dough and roll it with a rolling pin. We will roll it into a chapati, not too thick, not too thin. So now you can see I have finished rolling the dough and you can check the thickness, how much thick I have left it. We will be cutting this into 1 inch squares. So I will be cutting a 1 inch strips first. After cutting it vertically, I will be cutting it horizontally also. This is more quicker and easier than rolling the kalkals with the mold. So you can make all your kalkals in this way as well. Like Shankar Pali's and Christmas donuts, kalkal too is one of my favorites. So you can find those recipes as well on this channel itself. Once you have cut into 1 inch square, just take a single piece. You can check out the thickness as well. Join the two opposite corners and the other two corners as well and just give it a twist. And our little shells are ready. So these were really very quick and easy to make. Let me show you once more. As you make the kalkals, do arrange them on a tray and do place a napkin over it so that they do not get dry before we could fry them. So now make the rest of it in the same way. And so now you can see I have got two large trays of the kalkals as well as the shells. Once they are ready, no need to wait, we can just fry them directly. To fry the kalkals, I have taken 1 cup dalda and 1 cup oil. You can skip the ghee or dalda and can fry the kalkals in oil also. Once the oil is hot enough, to check it, we can drop a piece of the dough into the oil and if it bubbles up, the oil is ready and you can start frying the kalkals. Dropping the kalkal in, just leave it there for a few seconds and then keep moving around. I'll fry the kalkals on medium to low flame. If I feel it's getting brown faster, I will reduce the flame. But try to see to maintain the color of the kalkal. Keep it mostly on low flame. If you fry them on high heat, it will get brown quickly and it will be very soft from inside. That is, it will be still raw from inside. Keep stirring it so that it do not get burned. The kalkals will be fried in just 3 or 4 minutes. You see a slight brown on the edges, you can take them out of the frying pan. Try to maintain the flame on medium to low and let them cook properly so it gets nice and crispy. You can continue frying all the kalkals in the same way. Now let's fry the shells as well. Since the shells are more thinner, they will take lesser time to fry. You may find the kalkals sticking to each other, but then when you put them into the oil, just let them be there for a few seconds and then move them. You can see that they will separate out easily. Then continue moving them till it gets a little brown and then take them out of the heat. Only try to maintain the temperature of the oil. Do not let it get very hot. Reduce the flame if you find it's getting brown quickly. So you can see that when it gets a little brown, you can remove them out. And you can also maintain the color of the kalkals. Now continue frying all of them. After we have fried them, we'll just roll them in a little powdered sugar. I've taken one cup of green sugar and just made a powder of it in the mixer grinder. 
As the kalkal is cooled down a bit and you are able to handle them, just add it to the powder sugar and roll it in there. Just dust off the excess sugar from it. You can also use a sieve to do this. Those of you who do not like to add the sugar, you can skip this and you can serve it directly after frying it. So I'll continue rolling all the kalkals in the powdered sugar and dusting it off. Once the kalkals are cooled completely, you can store them in an airtight box and they remain good for 15 to 20 days. So you can see how crispy they are from inside as well. So this Christmas do try this colorful kalkal recipe and leave your comments below. So you can see all our colorful kalkals are ready and they are really very crispy and tasty. Do like, share and subscribe to Garf Inspiration and I'll see you soon in the next Christmas recipe. Till then, take good care of yourself. Take care. Bye-bye.